Hi, this is Lillian. And that's Nino. We're from Cinema 5D and today we'll be talking about log LUTs and the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit. This episode is brought to you by Tilta, a manufacturer providing you with industry-leading equipment and entire professional solution for all your filmmaking needs. Look how beautiful! Oh, why does it look so mushy and grey in the monitor? That is because it's a log image. Why are some things kept from our vision? Short for logarithmic, an option you have when working with modern cameras. The dynamic range of cameras is constantly increasing, meaning there can be very dark and very bright areas in an image at the same time, without cutting off detail on either end. This is not the case when you shoot with a baked-in contrasty look. It might look nice on the camera screen, but it cuts off highlights and shadows and limits what you can do with your image in post-production. When taking photos, we shoot in RAW so we can do as much as possible with it in post-production. Why not just do the same thing with video? The problem is, as opposed to photo cameras, it's impractical to shoot everything in RAW because of the enormous amounts of data it produces. Most cameras also don't shoot RAW video at all. A log image is an attempt by the camera manufacturers to squeeze as much dynamic range as possible into a highly compressed image without sacrificing too many highlights or shadows. Each camera manufacturer have their own logs, so they will have different names like C-log, V-log, S-log and so on. The different logs have all different features. However, all log images look greyish and unappealing before they've been graded in post-production. If you look at a histogram, which is a graph indicating where your shadows and highlights are in your shot, you can see your dark pixels to the left and the bright pixels to the right. A contrasty image will look like this. This is problematic if you want to do anything in post, because clipping of highlights and shadows will give you no details to work with. A log image, on the other hand, will give you a huge tonal midrange looking like this. Whereas this is looking dull when recording, a colorist will be thrilled to get so much pixel information in the footage, giving a much greater choice of exposure and color when grading. Be aware that a log image requires grading in post. If you don't intend to grade, you're better off shooting with a contrasty picture profile. And because your log image pulls up your shadows, your blacks will look grayish and noisy until you've pulled them back down in your grading. You might have to change the way you expose, depending on what camera and log you work with. Sony S-Log2 and especially the even flatter S-Log3 require you to expose more towards the right of your histogram, giving you a bigger range to work with when you're rather overexposed than underexposed. So it can be hard to know what your M image will actually look like when all you see is log. It's also extremely hard to judge if you're exposing correctly or not. You have to rely on a histogram away from monitor when working with log images. What you also can do is to apply a so-called lookup table or LUT to the image in order to see what it could look like after color correction. That LUT would be a preview that is usually not recorded, but it gives you something that's much closer to the final result. You can change that LUT according to your look and tailor it in a software such as DaVinci Resolve and transfer that with an SD card or a cable to a monitor. Modern cameras have built-in preview LUTs, but in my opinion, they usually suck. Especially on smaller cameras like the Sony a7S, for example. Only higher-end cameras like an FS7 can actually use imported LUTs from DaVinci, but even with these cameras, I prefer to use a monitor with that functionality, because I'm simply worried that I might accidentally record that preview LUT instead of the log image. So we have log and raw features in cameras, and LUTs to apply onto them. However, also 8-bit or 10-bit color spaces relate to the dynamic range. They define the number of color shades in an image. To put it simply, an 8-bit camera can record 256 shades of the same color, covering the whole spectrum from black to white. 256 shades of grey? It means that log images recorded on an 8-bit camera are quite stretched, because 256 steps of brightness aren't a lot at all. 10-bit color, like in higher-end, more professional video cameras, means 1024 shades of a color. This is relevant as soon as you apply heavier processing onto your image, like increasing saturation on an image with a lot of sky, which contains many fine variations of the color blue. With 8-bit color, you can get banding in the sky, meaning blocks of colors get grouped together because there isn't enough color information to make it an even gradient. In practical terms, it means you have to be very careful when exposing log images on an 8-bit camera. Just be aware that you do lose a lot of color information too. For example, it's hard to get nice skin tones in S-Log3 from an 8-bit A7S II. In this case, I would recommend using a different picture profile or switch to the less flat S-Log2. Conclusion! 
Even though a log image doesn't look so pleasing to the eye, it can really get you the best results if you know how to work with it. It works best on a camera with 10-bit color or more, but if your only choice is 8-bit, learn how to set your exposure, read waveform and histogram, and be aware of how your skin tones can come out. And a lot can really help you to see what your final image could look like, instead of hoping for the best. Servus! Servus. Cinema 5D Essentials is made possible by our sponsor Tilta. They make high quality camera accessories at affordable prices. This is their new Tilta Gravity G1 handheld gimbal, which is ideal for stabilization of small cameras. You can control it via app, and the built in DC in and out allows it to power multiple accessories. Check out all their gear at tilta.com.